Hi guys and welcome to this, my next video on combining linear and geometric growth or decay which is a lot shorter than the title in the Cambridge textbook which I think goes on for about 47 pages. My name is Darren from Maths Guru, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it is going to help you smash your financial maths component. Uh, whether you're doing the VCE course or not, uh, I'm going to go through uh, sort of a recap of what we've done before and a little bit more. Um, if I can ask a massive favour of you before I go any further and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn off notifications if you need to, it just lets me know that people are actually watching. Come on, who actually genuinely watches maths videos outside of you and my mother? Now again, what I tend to normally do or you're used to do was go through the learning objectives. They are there for you to have a look over if you need to. Uh, it'll just let you know what I'm going to cover by the end of the video. So thank you very much to Cambridge for allowing me to use your worked examples as well. You guys absolutely rock. Now, not much of a recap, although it's going to recap pretty much most of chapter 7. But what is going to be massively important, guys, is for the rest of this chapter, you are going to need a CAS calculator. The financial solver section of this course is massive. And a previous student, I think, lasted six months into a course without a CAS calculator before he basically admitted defeat and went, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do very well at this, am I, having already generally failed two sacks? So my advice is if you think you can do this on a standard calculator or your iPhone, you are probably sadly, sadly mistaken. Get a CAS and know how to use it. Speed in the exam is basically of the essence, as my mother said. Now, if you have learned anything about the work that we've been doing previously, you will know that this formula seems to rule them all. That recurrence relationship, which in most cases can be turned to a rule, and I do mean most cases, uh, basically defines linear growth, geometric growth, it talks about sort of flat rate depreciation, simple interest, oh, all sorts of stuff, you know, reducing balance, the whole works. And if none of that makes any sense, the videos are there once again on mathsguru.com. You can sign up for absolutely free, there's downloadable notes, uh, there's uh, sort of lessons, uh, exam questions, all sorts of stuff on there as well for you as well. Now, just as a recap, if you remember when r is equal to 1, then this sequence here, this, what is it, recurrence relation, will create a graph that gives you a straight line. It'll either be a straight line going up, if D is positive, it will be a straight line going down if D is negative. And D is some sort of fixed payment, be it simple interest or some sort of loan repayment, all right, linear sequence. We've also looked at examples in previous lessons where R has a value between zero and one, in which case it will be geometric decay and if it's one or more, it will be geometric growth. Now, the word of warning here is, as soon as we have a value on the end, and none of the questions we've dealt with have actually had values on the ends at this moment, yeah? As soon as we add a value on here, I am led to believe, because I read a very, very intense article or discussion about this, that it is no longer able to be described as geometric, all right? Because for geometric, it's got to grow in a particular way. This plus D will make it look like it's growing in a particular way, but in fact, it isn't. In fact, I think it was a previous exam question as well. All right, so just be careful that we are now going to be looking at situations where we have an R value, so a multiplier, and a number at the end. Okay, so it's going to make things more interesting, but it's going to start to model real world situations, right? Things that actually happen in real life, like my mortgage. I get charged interest, I make a payment. So I get charged interest and I'll make a payment. So let's go back to the basics, very, very basics here. Write down the first five terms. And again, if you go back to my very first video, I tend to go one, two, three, four, five, because the number of students who actually do six or four or can't count is quite terrifying. So what have we got here? My V0 is three, there's my first term. How do I get to my next term? Take my current term, times it by four, subtract one. Right, so three times four is 12, take away one is 11. All right, so I've got 11 now. Four times 11 is 44, take away one is 43, and I have no interest whatsoever of trying to do that because it's a CAS course. Why would I make a mistake? It doesn't make any sense for me to do this and make a mistake. I may as well just use my calculator. So if you remember, I can put three in and hit enter, and then I can say four times my answer, minus one, go one, there's 11, 43. What's my next one? 171, and hit enter again gives me 683. Now again, I haven't copped out there. I've literally used the calculator to make my life easier because I'm not gonna do 171 times four minus one. And the whole general math course allows you to use a calculator. Why wouldn't you? Now, this is where we're gonna adapt slightly and make it more real world again. We're gonna go back to some examples. Compound interest investments with a regular addition to the principal. 
That's basically just saying, I'm opening a bank account and I'm adding some money every month. Because every time you add some money, that is an addition to what we call the principal. So the money that you open a bank account with or, or a loan is called the principal. And we'll come back to that language uh, more as the videos progress. Right, so V0, yes, we've had that as my starting number. We can also now start thinking that as the principal. We are gonna have this here where R was my growth multiplier and R in this situation was worked out as either one plus or one minus. For interest, it's always going to be positive, right? So when we have interest paid, it's always gonna be one plus. But we're gonna start having a number at the end of here. That's what's basically the change between the work we've been doing before and the work we're doing now. Now again, at the very end of the last section of work, the last module of work, we looked at how we can have different interest rates. I mean, we have one per annum interest rate, so remember I may give you something like 9% per annum, but then we might compound monthly, which means that actually we're getting nine divided by 12% every month. And those interest conversions are massive in general maths, massive in financial. I cannot think of a sack that someone's gonna write that won't rely heavily on that because it's gonna trick people. And I know that seems unfair, but that's how we effectively spread you out is, is by trying to trick you. But of course, if you know the stuff, they can't trick you. It's, it seems a bit stupid really. The context of the question, as I say here, is going to tell you which of the formulas you're gonna use, what your interest rate is, and what you're gonna compound it. So realistically speaking, as I say to my students all the time, R, T, F, Q. Read the flipping, I said flipping, question, all right? Don't mess it up. All right, here's an example, because you've really got the theory from before. I shouldn't need to go too much into the theory because we now know it. Fred has saved $5,000 and invests this in a comp compound interest account, paying 4% per annum, compounding yearly. Now, the great thing is here, if it's compounding yearly, I don't need to do any dividing because that 4% is basically my little value of R. And I always write that off to the side of the page. Just keeps it clear in my head what it is. Model this investment using a recurrence relation of the form that. Now again, in this situation, you'll notice they've actually done the hard work for you. So what I've got to do is fill in the missing values. V0 equals the principal. Well, how much did he save? Invest, $5,000. There we go, $5,000. Comma, don't forget the comma. V of N plus one equals, well, I need capital R now. The question says, find my capital R. Well, we know what that is. It's equal to one plus four on 100. Now, why is it plus? because interest is always added on. Compound interest, always added on. Simple interest, always added on. So when I do one plus four on 100, I get 1.04. I did that off screen if that was okay. So that becomes 1.04 times V of N. And I'm just gonna move, let's move this over a bit to give me some more room. Uh, what have I got here? Well, I've got to put this pl plus D. What's that plus D? Well, that's the amount he's adding extra. And it says he's adding an extra $1,000 each year. So I'm gonna do plus 1,000 and ka-ching, we are done. That is it. So now we have a recurrence relationship to work out how much money he's gonna have after a certain number of years. Hmm. Happy? Nor invest $12,000 and plans to add an extra $50 each month. Are you looking at this already? Which, what's your value of D? You reckon? Okay, I'm talking to you like you're actually talking to me back. That, Maybe that's the voices in my head. Anyway, $50 each month. I think that's my D, isn't it? Nor invest $1,200. What's that going to be? Ah, oh, the account is paying an interest rate at 3% per annum. Hmm. Ah, oh, compounding monthly. So my R is going to be 3. My little R is 3 divided by 12. Which I think if I do that on my calculator, 3 divided by 12 gives me 0.25%. Now again, I'm gonna use that, aren't I? Because it's a recurrence relationship. So let's start. V0 is equal to the principal, 1,200, comma, V of M plus one equals, do I know what my capital R is? Have you thought that this is very samey? Mm, me too. It seems to be that we seem to financial maths do exactly the same thing over and over and over and over again. So one plus 0.25 divided by 100, hit enter, gives me 1.00. Two five. So there's my multiplier, 1.0025. Don't forget the V of M. Then what I'm gonna do, plus D. Is, is Nor adding anything? Oh, she is. $50 per month. And if you notice here, it's interesting how this figure says compounding monthly, 
and they are telling you that it's $50 per month. Those two things have to match up or the question isn't gonna make any sense, right? So writing recurrent relationships over and over again, really, really important skill to do. Albert has an investment that can be modeled by the recurrent relation. So you've noticed in the previous two questions, we've made you write a recurrent relation. Now we are asking you to interpret one, to actually look at it and go, well, do you understand what it means? So when you look at that V0 equals 400, what does it mean? When you look at this 1.005, what does that stand for? When I have this plus 30, what does that mean? All right, where VN is the value of the investment after N months. Now the why is that important? Why is that months word really, really important? Because it's gonna give context to that value of R in a moment, or my capital R. So A, we should be able to do pretty simply, state the value of the investment, or the initial investment. Come on, let's make it difficult, not $400. Don't forget the dollars, yeah? Determine the value of the investment after Albert has made three extra payments. All right, well, in which case they're just saying, can you do that three times? Let's use my calculator. So the first thing, if you remember, I'm gonna do 400, hit enter. And then the rest of it, I'm just gonna effectively copy that formula into my calculator as 1.005 times by wherever I see VN, I do ANS, plus 30. Now, how many months is it after three extra payments? All right, so one, two, three extra payments is going to give me in dollars, $496.48. Again, it says to the nearest cent, it wants it to two decimal places. Again, if you can't run to two decimal places, please ask your teacher for like 10,000 examples. Because once you've got it, I promise you, your um, your your raw score could actually go up by, uh, your, not your raw score, your actual um, number of marks could go up by 10. Because so many questions in the general maths exam ask you to round to significant figures or decimal places. What will be the value of investment after six months? Round to the nearest cent. All right, so we've already done three months. What am I going to do? Three, four, five, six. And so in that situation, we should have $594 and... 42 cents. <laughs> Plot the points for the value of the investment after zero, one, two, and three months on a graph. Now, obviously, in that situation, I would be wanting to plot uh, these on a graph. I don't really want to do that on a video because it will take way too long and probably won't make any or won't add any value. You should hopefully be able to plot values on a graph. If not, please learn because uh, it's again another skill that is important. Next, consider the annual interest rates for each of the following investments. Oh, sorry, determine. I wish I could read. This one here says determine the annual interest rate. So we're looking for a PA. Consider an investment given by this recurrence relationship. Okay, so when I'm looking for interest rates, I'm only interested in that value there. Where AN is the value of the investment after N months. Right. So what we're now being told in code, if you want, is that this here is a monthly interest rate. Well, we know that my R value is equal to 1.005. That's what that stands for in my recurrence relationship. But we know that R is given by one plus little r on 100. Oh, well, they've given me my value of R as 1.005, so I can put that in there. So I can now do 1.005 is equal to one plus R on 100. And I could do this in sort of old pencil and paper ways, and that just seems nuts because why would I? I'm going to put that in a solve in my calculator, comma, R. So I'm going to fire up my calculator. I know that's going to cover it over, but generally speaking, should be all right. So again, I don't know why I keep typing on my screen. What you guys can't see is every time the calculator comes up on my sort of uh, recording software, I try and click on the recording software and it's just a picture. And I must have done that now like 4,000 times for the videos I record and the number of times I do it. I'm getting old. Someone help me. All right. So what have I got? 1.005 equals 1 plus... Let's do my beautiful thing there, R on 100, comma R. And if you don't know how to do the solve function, again, the class pad guys, you've got exactly the same functionality. Hit enter and I get R equals little r equals 0.5%. Now again, the trick here is to keep in your mind that that value of R is a monthly interest rate, not an annual interest rate. How do I go from a monthly interest rate to an annual interest rate? Well, if it's compounding monthly, I would then need to multiply that by 12. And sadly, that's where lots of people get tricked in uh, Saxon exams because they forget to do that. So my annual interest rate for that would actually be 6%. Try not to forget that last step and get some practice in. 
Let's look at part B, consider an investment given by the recurrence relation where uh, it's done in n quarters. Right? The working out is going to be exactly the same. This time we're just going to multiply by 4. We're still going to look at this value here. We want this 1.012. Uh, and again, what is that? That is my capital R is 1.012. We know that that formula, that R was gained by doing 1 plus little r over 100. So I'm now going to substitute 1.012 is 1 plus little r on 100. Fire up my calculator. Let's do the solve function. And actually hit the right one this time, not the uh, image. 1 plus r on 100, comma r. So what have we got here? 1.012 equals 1, da da da. r equals 1.2. But, he says taking that down, is that my annual interest rate? No, because the question, that interest rate is quarterly. So what would I have to multiply by? Well, if I multiply by 4, I'm going to get 4.8% per annum. So my annual interest rate will be 4.8%. Practicing these skills is really, 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 really important. Okay, so just throwing that out there, out there now. And believe it or not, that's the end of this video. Now, I can't actually find any examples or exam questions for VCAR for this, but there are a lot more coming in other videos. So I'm probably going to call it a day here, which is probably one of the shortest videos so far. There are other videos coming on this series. They will all be featured in mathsguru.com. Go over there, sign up for free. And if you can, just subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just honestly, that subscribe button means that someone out there is watching these videos and it means the world to me. And apparently it's quite important for the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, my videos never get promoted and I can't help other people. All right, I'm done. Thank you very much. Take care, stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you in another video.